Yes. Yes. We will it's get to not that. a penis couch, okay? Please don't call it the penis couch. It was accumula accumulation number one and accumulation number two. <laughs> Oh my gosh. It's like the pussy chair. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Where is, is the penis couch now? Where is it? Uh, it's one in, it's in Germany, Mama, right? one in US. I will send you the links. I made the research. I don't want to mix the names, but she produced the uh, the chair and the, the armrest mm -hmm. chair, like the big one, and the couch and a bunch of them. This is how I got the technique because just for the record oh, nice. one one and a half years ago i had no idea how to create the soft sculptures uh mm -hmm. it's really recently learned skill for this project to, to fulfill mm -hmm. the concepts and the ideas elisa mm -hmm. what i need you to do yes. now is uh, on the, on your screen to the right you can see it says host tools yes and if you can click on that and it should have megaphone or amplify my voice it's already done. Great, great. And can everybody, can we see some hearts? Everybody, um, can everybody hear me? Yes, yeah. that's great. And Elisa, Elisa, can you just say hello? And we'll see if everyone can hello. hear you. Hello, everybody. I'm Elisa Sokolov, an international independent artist based in Israel. And now I'm still in US. I'm now in Las Vegas. So hello, shalom from Las Vegas. <laughs> and I'm happy to be here to stand again beside my art project in Southern Flyer. Amazing feelings I, I feel now. How are you doing, guys? <laughs> Great. So, Lisa, I'll go through and um, ask you some questions to learn a little bit more about the project. Um, maybe if you and I can switch places. If you can stand where I am, okay. are you able to? Yeah. Switch. To... Yes. But you get closer what? to the your art. You get closer to your art. There we go. This is the worst thing in my life. A little closer. A little closer. <laughs> A little closer. There. Perfect. Yep. Great. And okay. I will stand right here <laughs> and ask some questions. Um, and then if we should have time, we'll take some questions from the Zoom. So if you're on Zoom, you're there. We are happy to take your questions. And everybody here in the, in the, in the um, event, we're also happy to take your questions um, uh, as once we get through um, some Q&A that I have. Because this is such an extraordinary, extraordinary piece. We're so honored to, to have it here at Reburn 23. Um, a quick shout out to Ignacio over there. Um, who uh, e echoes? Ignacio used photogrammetry and scanned the piece on Playa, which is what we are looking at. This is this is an actual um, scan of the art. Um, Alisa, you you were saying earlier you are a contemporary Israeli artist. You're currently in Vegas. You're also a permanent member of the core of the International Art Group U3, and you're an active member of the Burning Man community. Um, can you tell us first, how did this project come to you? What was the inspiration? Uh, we, the initial inspiration was the combination of the story of Yayoi Kusama's accumulation number one and accumulation number two, which I already knew. And everything happened on the brainstorming, on the camp meeting for the region in June 2021. This is how we started. The plan was to install the kind of building in the in the desert because in Israel we all also have a desert and we make a very nice uh, regional event. And the idea was to make the crazy art gallery. So we were sitting there and reminding the, the artists that have been known to be like to be called crazy or insane or something like this. And the Ayuko Kusama, she is now the most um, expensive artist in the world from now living female artists. And I already made some projects connected to her art. And uh, this is how it came to my mind back when I was impressed by my own personal experience of the gender chauvinism in Israel, <laughs> because I'm quite self-made girl. And when I moved into, to Israel 2016, first I was traveled a lot and I didn't really live there. So I started to live there exactly within the pandemic. 
And uh, after the pandemic started to give us the break for some events to be appointed, this is how it started. Uh, spoiler, it never has been exhibited in Burning Man regional event <laughs> because I left for Moscow where my cat was about to die. And I finished the Vagina Front number one uh, within the 11 months. I finished it in the end of April 2022. This is how we started. So Thank the you. Vagina yeah. Front number one have never been exhibited because the war between Russia and Ukraine already started and it's still stuck in Moscow apartment. <laughs> but it seems pretty great. More of Lisa, I'm going to just stop you for a second. I'm going to stop you for that because we're having some audio problems. Um, can everybody else just confirm you're you're not able to hear Elisa? I need to see some emojis. Are are you able to hear her? Can you share heart emojis if you're able to hear her? I've been hearing fine. Okay, great, great, great. It's ju I just want to be clarify. It's just my headset. Elisa, you're doing great. I'm gonna just keep going, and uh, we'll deal with it. Um, so. You you have this institution. You're in these camp meetings, and you decide you're going to bring this project to Playa. What no, are the logistical? this was the idea. The idea Sorry. to uh, to apply for a Playa art was uh, belongs to my friend from Florida. He's an engineer, also one of the engineer of my project, and uh, he it was just <laughs> I applied last in last day of the application period. Uh, 31st of May and it took me 11 hours actually to fill the form because my English is very basic and it's not easy to express something with 1000 characters where oh my god where was it built which one the one that we are standing beside now has in the in the yes. Arca working space in Reno, actually, yes, I arrived uh, in, uh, the, in the beginning of August, I arrived to Reno. I've been super lucky to adopt it by my campmate. <laughs> he provided me his, like the place to stay, actually. And uh, I applied to the generator Reno. This is the huge co-working space organized by some, actually, of my campmates. I'm from the, the Camp Monsonian Institute for Urban Study. And, um, uh, so one can another camp, campmate Joe uh, established this generator Reno, and this is the huge, huge building where the artists uh, building their big in art installations for Burning Man. We have there all the equipment to cut the metal, the glass, everything, and I was so so happy to work there beside and at the same time with the coolest artists for Burning Man. I met some. Uh, so they, they, because I applied very close to Burning Man, they uh, gave me the, the space for just one table right in the middle of the huge building. And everybody who were passing by, like, stopped by my table, asked questions, and I was saying, <laughs> don't you dare to touch my precious vaginas with your dirty working hands. <laughs> and I was like, do you, do you realize that you're going to to provide this project to be interactive art installation to Playa. And it took me, the, the hardest part with this project was to proceed this uh, separation psychological moment, you know, <laughs> because the Burning Man one was the very big chair. It contains 97 soft sculptures. It's a lot. It's very, it's, it's very much, it's a lot. Yeah. But um, can I, it's, can I ask uh, a follow up question? Um, if yeah. I may. Work with multi-genre artistic tools, and I know I that so much. You good. Could you please repeat the question? Yeah, something with the microphone. Yes, I, I know, know that you work with multi-genre tools, and you often rethink and update the issues of social, cultural, and gender injustice. I wonder if you can tell us how that artistic approach is realized by this piece. Yes, so I started with, uh, with the necessity to tell the story about the fact that the gender chauvinism is still relevant. And I decided to take the, um, to, to participate in discussion about the role of the women in the modern world. 
because uh, at the same time we can have the women as the president of the country, we can send women to outer space, and at the same time still we can get to the situation when we're talking to the bunch of men who treat us like like I'm a mute or I'm like a half a person, and it's complicated. So, so Yayoi Kusama was protesting about it, about gender chauvinism in, our, in art community of New York in the 60s. So 60 years passed and we still have this shit. I wanted to participate in this discussion, so I took the symbol of the power, the armrest chair in the shape of throne. This was the idea and mixed it with the, with the symbol of femininity. Uh, but when I was working on this project, of course, I had I, of vagina, of vulva, I will use as a, as a base for my sculpture. Initially, I was uh, going to make them all the same because I was not professional in making soft sculptures. And I made a research. While this research, so I basically I was Googling the pictures of vulvas and vaginas in, in internet. And I was super impressed because uh, I found a bunch of really nice pictures of really nice looking vulvas on the websites of the plastic surgery clinics with the idea of promoting to change the shape of uh, labias because of the, I don't know, it's, I, can, I can't get it till the end. I'm just over impressed with the fact that it's uh, like exists. So this is where I pissed off. I decided to make them all different to focus uh, on the, also on the idea that to support the young girls, or not on the young girls, to support all the women uh, with acceptance of their bodies. This was the idea. Also, when I was working with this project, <laughs> another shape of the concept uh, popped up. Mm, a bunch of people have the first question that they ask, can I fit on the vagina from? So for the, for the part of the audience, it's still the chair with a bunch of pussies. And as an artist, I can't ignore it. Although my initial uh, idea was a little bit different, but uh, I, I know that uh, I understand I want to co communicate with all, represent all types of representatives of the audience. So for the Burning Man, the idea was to train also the active concerns. So for the people who want to interact with, the, uh, with this art, uh, considering the, this be, to be the chair covered with, for them, to sit on it means like the action of in, like some actual action, okay? And it's to, to be with the consent. So for my engineers, one from the one from Las Vegas, <laughs> they installed the buzzer underneath the seat. And in the beginning, it was very interactive uh, project. Uh, the buzzer had a remote control. And if there was a volunteer or the artist or someone beside the art, the remote control was off. And the active concern was able to be asked and received. But for, for those periods of time when the person beside the art, uh, there was a sign, please do not sit on the throne without concern. And we, of course, we knew that people of burning science, <laughs> like will break the rules, it's okay. And uh, for, for them, uh, there was a reaction of the project to produce the vibration from underneath the seat. But this shape, this part of the concept didn't work so well because we, and my team only already, being already on flyer, we had no chance to try it so much. And the vibrations that our brain produced uh, turned out to be not surprising and not making jump on the seat but very nice massage and vibration. <laughs> and uh, people just uh, just enjoyed the, the feeling. <laughs> this is how it finally went Wonderful. out to burning home. Alisa, I know, I, this is not, mind, yeah. I know this is not the only throne you've done. So where is this one and what have you done since? Well, after Burning Man, I've been invited to a private art residence by some some of my Burning Man folks from my camp, They're very nice people. And I've spent their three weeks in their guest house in the ranch in Northern California to create the vagina from number four. So the vagina from number one have been created in Moscow, never been exhibited 
the vagina from number two have been created in Israel and presented the it was the Burning Man, but it was provocated by Burning Man because all of this happened after a post on Facebook after 12th of June, presentation of the uh, 3D model of my art uh, in virtual reality Burning Man flyer. So thank you guys. It's like this initiative led me to create the vag one more vagina front in this world. And the vagina phone number four have been created and now it's exhibited in uh, the second already art gallery in Las Vegas, uh, where I'm uh, spending my time after the Burning Man. And I also, I created a bunch of more art uh, with some connected but separated concepts. There are some shadow frames with the sculptures uh, telling the story of some lesbian couple, my friends, who have been um, rejected with the idea to adopt a child in Russia just because they're they're a lesbian couple. And also, just recently, I made my first commission project for the um, for the gynecologist doctor from Turkey. Uh, she's the one who is traveling the world and sharing the uh, the doctor experience with the other doctors all over the world and also she's providing the workshops for young girls also to explain him, them how, how does it all work how to stay healthy and so on and she was very impressed by my art she asked me to produce something that she can put on her to use it as a educate educational model you know how they do it so i finished the vulva vest uh, <laughs> It's not me, I'm about to make a bunch of to send it. It will have your own story. Lisa, Lisa, can you tell us when you were preparing this for Burning Man in such a short time, what challenges you came up against? Well, <laughs> It's highly not recommended to live like this, but I worked a lot and I not so much and I was in my time and I was eating once per day, but it's only because of you know, not for Burning Man, it's not really like there were challenges, of course, it was it's a very fresh project. It's I'm super professional and uh, repairing the antique chairs or maybe the soft sculptures, and it was a lot of hunting the materials. But every worked out with a lot of good people. To be honest, our project has like good power energy. So it's, it attracts people like, uh, I'm grateful to a lot of people. I can't even make a list of them. There are a lot of people who just helped me to, to create it. And give it worth. Amazing. What do you hope will take away from experiencing the vagina throne? What I what I can sorry, I missed the question because of the connection. I Did was you asking the question. What do you what do you hope people take away? from experiencing the vagina throne? Well, first, uh, this my, my vagina throne makes people to stop <laughs> and to stare a little bit. And I can read by faces that they, they have the thinking process starting. Some of them wants to talk about it. Some people sharing with me a lot of very sensitive experiences about how they wanted to change their bodies. Like a group of 19 years old girls brought their friend, one of their friends, they brought it to my art project to show it to her, to change her mind about uh, making the plastic surgery. This episode made me cry from being happy as an artist. Like this moment showed that as an artist, I'm successful one. <laughs> this works actually. Um, some people wants to uh, they use my art uh, to, as an opportunity to talk about sexuality, actually, which is very 
under taboo in their cultural code. Actually, the, a lot of Russian people, they can't uh, talk about this art uh, op open. It's uh, complicated for them to even pronounce the name. So, but, but when it's an art, when it's not, when a person is not talking about himself, like it helps, it's, um, it's stating like, it helps people to talk more free, more open when they have an art piece to discuss. And I believe, and I, I discussed it with some psychologists and sexologists, that it's very helpful for their transformation. Like, not, not everything, not a huge transformation, but one step at a time. And, uh, and of course, there are a bunch of people who are on my side, who can, who can see all the vulvas as very beautiful, created by nature. They just love the, they just loved it. They don't proceed no transformation and receive the experience of meeting something nice because the soft cultures they went out to be very few i have a larger philosophical question to ask since your art is responding to i think you say the degradation of the values of modern society is society today better, worse, or the same as societies of the past? Which past do you mean? The, you, you don't could want you, to specify which Could you hear that? Yes, yes. Well, I, I've been born and raised in Soviet Union. And of course, now today, I'm much more happy of the society of our communication and the channels of communication. Um, well, me, I consider the society is much more flexible and has more opportunities to change, to be changed, because we have our opinion makers who can spread the ideas uh, with the help of internet and the social media, we can and show them the right experiences, the right examples of how to communicate with some. And uh, I'm happy to be able to participate in this. I don't know what you guys think. <laughs> the society or community to, to, to then that's, that's the That's a past. perfect segue. I'd love to open up to our, our guests. Does anybody have a question for Elisa? Just raise, show us an emoji or raise your hand. I'd be happy to know from the audience uh, your first thought or your first idea when you saw my art. This is always inspiring me and supporting me. I want to learn it because I'm, I want to be careful and attentive to all the, all the feedback from the audience that I received. Um, what about what about the fundraising? How did you go about oh, oh. Oh, figuring out the cost and then fundraising? Well, it was first attempt of fundraising in my life. <laughs> I, I knew that the fundraise companies, they may be an Israeli citizen. Only one fundraise uh, platform uh, allowed me to be registered to be an Israeli. And I had some issues to withdraw those money. And actually, it was not really helpful. I just invested my own money, being not granted. So I called myself an independent artist. I just, uh, I was doing good before the war, and I had some savings to invest it in my artistic career. This is my situation. <laughs> Who is this with the drone? <laughs> the drone. <laughs> Actually, I just, I just, I recently came back from Miami Beach, where it was the art base of Miami, and uh, I was very lucky to had an opportunity to present there my art, not physically, but pictures in digital and in digital form, and uh, also the pictures of the vagina front and some more of my art pieces also based on the subcultures. 
uh, they have been printed on the billboards and those billboards have been installed on the huge tracks that, that made a column and were circulating between the key objects of the Miami Art Basel. And I had amazing moments when I was presenting my art to people. It was a rare, unique moment, which I can't uh, even Im imagine myself um, that is possible to happen in because uh, my art is now in Russia. It might cost up to 10 years in jail because the Vagina Front now considers a propaganda of pornography. The family portrait is the propaganda of homosexualism, which is now very illegal. And uh, I also make anti-war stuff. So that's why I'm now somewhere in the world presenting my art to less totalitarian regime people. <laughs> Do we have any Amazing. It's, it's unbelievable, you know, to think your art can now put you in jail. Uh, actually, we have a very uh, famous case of Yulia Kvitkova. She is a Russian artist and she made a aqua uh, color pictures as an illustration for the vagina monologues very famous book and show and they uh, she was under criminal investigation over two years finally she was released by court then the prosecutor wanted to to renew this again and now she uh, she she was have to leave russia she escaped from russia recently it happened like in november unbelievable unbelievable we have a question from sarah who is watching on the zoom hi and sarah you talked a little bit about this earlier but i'm hoping you can give us a little more about future projects you have planned that have a similar theme well uh, this is the question that sometimes breaks my heart because usually uh, people ask uh, this question to me when I just uh, just finished the project uh, captured me for a while. You know, the first time kind of me 11 months and within those 11 months treating my cat from the very heart disease and I was like, in, instead of his kidneys and I wanted to give up sometimes but every day when I walk uh, in front of my eyes, when I just, with my eyes closed, there is an inner screen, and I saw the picture of the vagina front that I'm the only person in the world that saw it like this, and I knew possible to to fulfill it. So I just woke up and uh, went to work again. And uh, usually, when I just finished my have other ideas, and I'm enjoying this. So recently just finished the vulva vest and I also have two more ideas. One of them is fun and one of them is very complicated and hard. So, so the fun one is uh, <laughs> I will make, um, oh, I forgot, a hot piece. Okay, this is the place on the men's trousers that covers the cock. <laughs> Uh, a bunch of men uh, told me about that they would be happy to wear it on, on their trousers. So this is what I'm working on next, but this is a simple one. The complicated one is very um, tough topic. When I was starting, when I just started to work with the soft sculptures in the shape of vulvas, a bunch of people told me that as an artist, I should point my attention on the fact that in some countries, due to some religious reasons, uh, they, made, uh, they make the uh, cir circumcising the girls, ruining their like vulvas. Uh, in the beginning, it was really, uh, it's still very hard for me even to think about it. So I still really didn't make the serious research. Um, uh, but uh, since I've been told about it several times, I started to see the vision of this, and I'm now searching how, searching the opportunities to fulfill it. So one time, meeting any movie director, someone who is producing the video, 
cut in the stadium. So I want to make a very beautiful vagina front uh, to film the process and to show how beautiful it is and show some nice reaction of people on it. And then I want to take the huge scissors and cut the labia and film it. And then to take a piece of uh, brick and to cover it and put it in the corner. Oh, I want to combine it with some symbols based on the to touch this topic. So probably this would be my not coming, not fun project that I already feel it with because it's already the these images are already in my mind. I can't just erase it. I hope Thank I you so much question. for sharing. Yes, the uh, circumcision of young girls um, in in um, for you know for religious reasons is is a fascinating and difficult subject. Um, it, it's a strange question for me to ask, but what have you learned about the vagina? I learned. Uh, once there was a very nice situation. So I presented my vagina from number two in Israel. First, it had been presented in uh, in the theater, in the Haifa theater. Haifa is one of the three biggest cities in Israel. Uh, so one person made the premiere of the new opera there and invited me to present the vagina from. Uh, because of this, I, made, I, met, I met several, like a bunch of people and one of them was about 50 year old man a uh, huge car and he wanted to take care of me i was enough to talk about my art so he offered him to bring me to make some to buy some stuff before i to us and we've been together in the shop where i uh, bought the fabric to to get the fabric is a huge deal for me <laughs> and it, hours and a lot of action. So we were finally in the right shop and the person who was cutting the brick and the guy put me there. Uh, they were discussing what the difference between vulva and the vagina <laughs> in Hebrew uh, because of my art. And I was not interrupting there, I was not participated in the discussion. Oh, I, I wanted so hard and I could. But I was followed, and they finally said that both of them were different between wolf and vagina. <laughs> and I was so happy for this uh, because I was in there thinking that probably two of those men want something, something new for them about the women's physiology, and probably they will bring more orgasms to this world. It's all caused by me as an artist. This is beautiful as for me. This is beautiful, yes. <laughs> yes. And also, I, uh, I, I want to I reach out again one. To, the, to the audience, to our guests, and see does anybody have a question for Elisa? No problem. <laughs> Just wanted to say. Actually, I'm Hello, can you hear sorry. Me? One second. Yes. Go ahead, Emerald Hook. Yeah. Um, I was actually, I, I was passing the uh, headset over to my husband just now uh, to show him the art. Yes. And uh, he was like, oh, oh, it's a, it's a throne, it's a throne of pussy. <laughs> well, it's called the vagina throne. Yeah. It's just a, the, the way that, uh, like, he, had, he didn't see the uh, sign down below at first. And oh, that, so that... Like, I just was like, you want to come see this? This is actually really <laughs> cool art. And, he, and that and, was and comment, Elisa, his initial comment. Wh what, is it, what is it like when you know that gay men and gay women and old, you know, old straight women who've only seen, you know, all the variables of kinds of sexuality and gender, how, how is it different for you when you, when you know who your audience is? Well, actually, uh, I like to give the audience the opportunity to take a look on this and to make their own um, opinion. 
and only then uh, I can say that I'm an artist. Uh, well, it's it's actually it's very impressive. I already uh, once I spoke with the woman who made a very not nice face. <laughs> didn't know that I'm an artist. It was an art cafe in Israel, and then I came to her and we discussed it. And you know, we I managed to listen to her to explain everything, and I managed to change her mind about the motivation that made me to make this project. So first she thought that the motivation was just to use the provocative image of vulva just to attract the attention. And I managed to expand her vision a little bit and she was like over 60, which I really appreciate. But the majority of reaction that I met was of course very positive. And uh, what I was really impressed by when there was a couple from some other country and they were making the picture of my art to share it with their children. And they were at the age of my parents. Uh, my parents are Russian and my father cannot talk to me about my art. <laughs> so I learned that I'm happy to live in the world. I'm happy to be the citizen of the world, which I am, I really am. Um, and I'm happy that uh, people are different and all, all of those different people can read my message fulfilled by art language. This is what made me really happy. My concept works, <laughs> considering it works. what I heard from people. It works. Elisa, what contemporary artists are inspiring you? Mm. Uh, I'm inspired of some artists that uh, produce an art that I can. <laughs> For example, Banksy, Yayoko Samo, of course. Uh, some other, of course, I'm following some artists to, which I appreciate for being able to build their artistic career successfully, but it's not because I really love their art. Well, I don't know, I'm, I'm really by my own and uh, I'm recycling a lot of art, but uh, so recently I met uh, Jamie McCartney, the, the artist that uh, the author of the Great Ball of Vulva, which is installed uh, in uh, uh, World Erotic Art uh, Museum in Miami Beach. And he works with this topic for much longer than me. His main idea is the diversity, he's celebrating the diversity. Um, he might be one of the artists I'm really inspired. <laughs> I also am inspired by Burning Man artists, of course, because for me, when I was working in the generator, it was interesting because I was very inspired by those big teams, okay, when there is an artist and he has like over 15 people in their team and they all work together, they were very nice people. And I was just by my own. But those people uh, told me that they really adore me <laughs> being by my own independent and do the whole project. I don't know, people always searching for something that they don't have. Yes, yes. And what about, you've talked about in the future working with video. You're a multi-genre artist. What other tools and genres do you want to work in? Well, I already a uh, very um, experienced person in my life. I have uh, 15 years uh, of career of makeup artist. And when I'm, um, I, when I'm working as a makeup artist, I'm kind of creating art in a very complicated uh, canvas. On the canvas, which is never still, on the canvas, which is talking on the phone <laughs> and in a very short time. But for the makeup, uh, you can use wherever. You don't, you don't have problems with uh, applying a sponge on someone's face with just glue, if it's uh, helped you. So I already made some art projects with, using the medical masks within the pandemic, using my makeup, of course. I'm makeup artist for the special effects and movie shooting and so on. And um, now, I don't know. I'm now very captured by what I'm doing within those soft cultures, and I don't feel like I said 
everything that I wanted to say using this technique and this concept. But I'm, usually I'm, I'm inspired by some traumatical experience. And uh, I don't know. I already made art about the rocket shootings that I faced in Israel in May 2021. And in the, there were digital collages and the diary notes that I wrote in Facebook. Uh, we combined it together and presented it one month and a half before the war between Russia and Ukraine. Russia was pretty impressive. And uh, in the future, I'm I'm really focused on... Actually, I want to see my art in contemporary art museums. <laughs> This might uh, might be the proper place for the uh, vagina front. And I also focused on searching some technical guides because I really want to fulfill right the interactive part of the concept. I want to train the active concern. So I'm now searching for some consultants, the engineers, and so on. We'll Wonderful. see what we will do together. I just want to share some feedback that has been um, posted on Zoom. It's from, um, oh, hold on, let me get that. It is from Nikki. And she says, someone who believes women's sexual wellness is too often ignored. I just want to say, I really appreciate Alyssa's focus and artwork and that Burning Man continues to offer her a platform to showcase it. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you Can so you much. Some... This is really warming my heart. Heart emojis. Heart emojis for Nikki. Thank you. Also want to tell you that I, um, I don't want to say who, but um, there is a um, trans person in this, um, in this experience right now was expressed to me privately some really rad deep gratitude for what you're doing. Thank you so much, wherever you are. <laughs> you can write me privately. I will be happy to receive this feedback. Uh, if you have any other questions, you always can find me in social media. I'm very intensive now in, in Instagram. And can I hope to see you somewhere account? offline. The Instagram account is vagina front art, one word, no, no spaces, no dashes. And, vagina um, drone. Vagina art. front one art. One word, no spaces. Yes. Excellent. And if you have any other ideas, uh, initiatives, I'm very open for collaborations, and I'm very flexible in what I can do. <laughs> I mean, like recently, <laughs> I just, I just composed two real best. And uh, this is really unique, but I'm, I'm uh, satisfied with the quality of what I produced, like a piece of cloth. And uh, this is the first experience in my life. So it's very inspiring. I can do a lot of cool, powerful things. Amazing, amazing. Well, we have a few minutes left. Um, I thought what I would do is we can wrap up now, and if anybody wants to come over and ask Alyssa any questions one-on-one, -on -one, she's here for about another 10 minutes. Um, but for now, we just want to say thank you so much for your faith in mankind <laughs> and truly creating art that makes a difference. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, guys. Thank you for all of your hearts and attention and for opportunity to talk about my art. I will never be tired from this. And uh, thank you for everything that you do to compose the virtual reality flyer, which is really brings us back to Burning Man. I, re I already miss. <laughs> I'm so okay. happy to be here. Thank you, Burning Man. I love you. Thank you, everybody. Bye now. And thank you, Hello, Andrew. Lisa. You are a really good interviewer. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. You're a great subject. It's easy when it's a great subject. Hello, Alisa. Hello, how are you doing? This is good. This is Gazoo. <laughs>